Hello, welcome to a very exciting creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the new animation controllers motor functionality, which has been anticipated by quite a few people. And I'm glad to announce that it's now finally available for the creature animation tool. So what are animation con controllers? Well, for a start, it allows you to do an effect like this, like what you're seeing on screen. Now, animation controllers are basically a way to capture all the motor attributes and parameters of bone and mesh motors. So you can capture any combination of bone and mesh motors and then produce results or effects like what you're seeing on screen here. In this case, I'm actually using the animation controllers functionality to capture the poses of a character. The pose of this owl is captured from the mesh grid motor. So I, have a, I overlaid a mesh deformed grid motor on top of the head mesh of this bird and I animated different poses making the owl look in different directions and that all goes into the animation controllers which then allows me to actually control it as you can see on the right hand side of the screen I can actually change the pose of the character or make you know change where the character is actually looking based on the poses I have captured very powerful functionality and this is just the tip of the iceberg you can do much much more with animation controllers now this is going to be a series of tutorials I'm going to cover for animation controllers because it's such a powerful concept and such, such a powerful f a piece of functionality. The most basic way of using it, of course, is to do pulse or morph target capture. So I'm going to cover that first and then we're going to move into more advanced topics like actually using animation controllers to, to do stuff like muscle activation, skin sliding and that sort of stuff. Really, really cool stuff that I'm going to cover in the next few tutorials. But without further ado, let's get started with the basic functionality of animation controllers. Okay, so to get started, I have basically made a new test clip with just, with just basic animation of the owl. There are no animation controllers on the owl, so you can see it is still doing head, head turning, but this is directly keyframed from the mesh grid motor. So let's get started with the setup first, and then we'll get to animation controllers. Now let's look at what we've done with the head. Now on the head, I have a deformed grid motor on attached to the head. If you click on edit motor, you will see there is a grid conveniently overlaid on top of the owl. And if I step through the keyframes, you will notice that I have a bunch of different keys where I basically deform the head to make it face in different directions or different angles. Okay, pretty basic stuff which you can already do with the creature animation tool. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually capture these poses. I'm going to capture every single pose as sort of a morph or target, you know, more for, more for pulse target, sorry. And then I'm going to actually use the animation controllers to drive the head motion to make it much more easier to animate this entire character. All right. So let's, let's see, just, let's just see how the basic animation goes. You know, you just, right now it basically just turns left, it goes down, turns right and goes up. Yep. Yeah? Really, really simple stuff. Okay. So let's start with actually capturing these poses. What did we do? Very simple. Now, first thing you do is you click on animate and go to motors, swaps and effects and you move your mouse over to animation controllers. Okay, so welcome to the animation controller screen. What you need to do now is to actually add an animation controller. So move your mouse to the plus button, click on that. And you have two kinds of animation controllers you can add. You can either blend across a line, a single one dimensional line, or you can blend across a polygon. Now both of them allows really smooth blending, animation pose blending across their different ver the, the vertices of, of the shape or line. In the case of a line, you're blending across poses and you're saying that I only really want the each interpolation, each morphed pose, so to speak, to be affected by two neighboring poses. Whereas in the polygon case, you're actually saying it's going to be, going to be even more flexible. I want to be able to blend in the middle of, of, of you know, some number of poses, right? So I'm going to pick polygon for today and you can try a line for yourself. You can see it's a lot simpler. If you actually understand polygon, you, could de you definitely understand line. So let's try the polygon animation controller. So give it a name. I'll just give it a default name for now and click OK. Right. So this is the shape, the polygon shape of your animation controller. You can change the number of points on the shape. The total number of points, total, total number of poses is, is limited to 12, which should be ample amounts for you. 
But let's do four poses. Okay, so what I'm trying to say now is I'm going to capture four poses from this owl, this, this owl character over here. I'm going to capture four poses into the animation controller. The next thing you just need to do is to move your mouse back to the main screen to your character, click on the mesh motor, in this case the mesh, because I have the mesh motor installed on this mesh. Click on the mesh of this character and just click plus add on here and immediately you can see the mesh motor of this character has been added into the mesh listing of the animation controller. Now you can also add bone motors as well. You just go in here, let's go back to bone mode, you just highlight the whole set of bones and click plus and there you go, there you have it. You have a bunch of bone motors also added to the animation controller. Right? Okay, so that basically allows you to add a bunch of either bones or meshes to the animation controller. But for today, we're just going to be concerned with the mesh starting out. You can actually add, add multiple meshes to the animation controller, just like how you can add multiple bones to the animation controller. So I'm going to remove the bones by, you know, deleting them. I'm going to remove all these bones, and I'm just going to be focused on the mesh for today. Okay, so on with the animation controllers. Before I even continue, I just wanted to note that you can also optionally check this thing called rest pose. If you check it, you'll get an, an additional capture point in the center of your animation controller polygon. This is completely optional, but if you want to capture a specific rest pose of your character, like you have a really, really special rest pose that you really want to blend or morph to, then definitely check this, and we're going to use it today, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so now I have basically four corner vertices of the animation controller of this polygon, and I have a center point, the rest pose, because I have actually checked the rest pose of of the animation controller. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the capture mode. So I click on capture and this is where I actually capture the poses of this owl or the head of the owl. So what I do is you just have to go, it's very simple actually, you just go to the correct frame that you want to capture. So at frame 0 I am going to select this guy, the center, center point, and I'm going to capture him at the default pose. So I'm going to give him a, a name, say default, okay? So that's the default. Now, I'm going to move across the timeline, so let's see what happens here. Let's, let's try this pose here. So this is when the owl is moving to the left. So I'm going to click on the left node. It's, again, it's completely up to you where you want to capture the pose nodes, but I'm just going to make it intuitive for me in terms of direction. So I'm going to select this pose or pose node over here, and again, I'm going to click this, and I'm going to give it a name, say left, all right? And then let's go forward in the timeline, and the owl goes, I think it he, he, the owl tilts the head downward. So let's use this node over here, and we give it a name, say down. And then let me go forwards. I'm going to veer to the right, so this guy over here. Let's give him a pose name called right. And then finally, I'm going to make the owl go up, tilt upwards like this over here, and I'm going to call this pose up, right? Okay, so I have basically captured five poses of th this owl over here, and don't worry, you can actually come in here and rename the poses if you want. You can, ch you can change their priorities, your positions, all that. That all works. But for now, I have captured five poses, the default pose, the left, the right, the up, and the down. And now we're ready to do animation with the animation controllers. So how do we animate with animate animation controllers? It's very, very simple. Move your mouse to the Animate tab, click on it, and now you're in Animate mode. It's that simple. Now, the first thing you want to do is to check this active thing. By default, it is inactive, which means that the animation controller is not actually driving this owl. So again, we have this default animation, but it's not very interesting and it's just whatever we had keyframed in the mesh grid motor. When you turn this to on, let's flip the switch. Actually, let me make this a bit smaller. Let's flip the switch. Let's flip the switch for the animation controller to active and see what happens. All right, let's actually change a pulse and see what happens. Let's flip the switch. Ah, you see that, right? So when I flipped it, immediately it snaps to default. Why is that? That's because I actually have the animation controllers set to default. I can actually drag the pose 
And now you see how powerful this thing really is. I'm actually changing the pulse of this owl by dragging a point from within my animation controller polygon. So this allows me to very easily animate something like a head turning pose based off the actual poses I've captured from some motor or group of motors. In this case, I've captured five poses from my mesh grid motor, as I demonstrated before. And I'm basically just changing the pose of the character by dragging the point within the polygon. Very, very powerful stuff, right? So actually, let's see what happens when you try to animate it. So if, if say, at frame 105, I'm at default, right? And if I go back to frame 0, if I tilt to the, to the left, right, let's tilt it to the left and see what happens. You can see that the animation controller's dot in the polygon actually moves between the actual poses I am I'm animating with, the keyframes, right? So I can easily jump within keyframes by clicking on the keyframe buttons. And of course, there's also shortcuts for that in the tooltips, as you can see as well. Now, you can obviously interpolate in between you can interpolate in between, so I can actually set any pose I want, essentially, right? So you can see that, look at this. So how you can look at how the point actually moves within the polygon. So this actually allows me to very easily animate all these different owl poses based on just interpolating, interpolating within this polygon shape. And so everything becomes even more intuitive just by, just by me actually using this animation controller to change the pose or the, the captured parameters or attributes of this motor. Very, very powerful stuff. You can see how it's, it's useful, not just for this, but other applications as well. But the purposes of this tutorial is not just making the animation, but also teaching you how to use animation controllers. So let me go through some other basic functionality. You can jump through keyframes by clicking on these buttons on the animation controls toolbar here. So if you click this, it goes back to the previous keyframe you've set for the animation controller. You click this, it goes forward. So you can very easily do that. Now, you can come into any keyframe. And if you press the remove not, remove not or delete key, it will remove that keyframe at that current frame. So now I've, I've lost that keyframe. So I can jump back to the previous keyframe as well. The copy Copy controls work as well, so you can actually copy a pose that you have. You can paste, of course, and you can break down a pose. So I can go to some, sorry, I can go to some middle pose. Let's say I'm in the middle of some, yeah, let's say I'm in the middle of here. I want to break it down to a keyframe. So just click break down, and that becomes a keyframe by default. And of course, undo redo works. You just press control Z or control Z to undo and control Y to redo. All of that works, okay? So all the basic functionality you expect from animating with a default timeline knots or spline thing also works. And of course, your question is going to be, well, that's great, but what if I actually wanted to animate the spline, so I wanted to see the knots on the timeline panel? How do I do that? Of course, it's available. Now, let's clear the knots and timeline panel first so it's cleaner, and then I can demonstrate to you what we can do with this functionality. So you just move your mouse when you have with the animation controller in active mode, you move your mouse to knots and splines and click on this button. And then immediately, you can see, let me show you, you can see I have the animation controllers actually added to my timeline. And the beauty of this is that even though the mesh grid motor has a ton of knots and splines because it's got lots of points, when you actually animate with the animation controller, you get these convenient two, two attributes that you just basically animate over. So it's a lot more simplified, a lot easier, and much, much cleaner. So I highly recommend use animation controllers if you're doing any kind of pose, front-facing pose animation. Of course, you can also add the animation controllers to the splines window or panel as well. So you can actually animate or change basically the timing, the ease in and ease out operations of, of, your, of your character. Now you get basically two splines. You get the position X and position Y because you basically have a polygon here. In the 1D case where you're animating across a line animation controller, you get two of them as well, but only the pause X makes sense because it's a one dimensional case that makes any sense to you. In this case, you can animate across both splines. So it becomes really easy for you to do ease in, ease out operations with the animation controller when you're animating 
you know, something like, like a head turning pose. So you have all the power and functionality of your regular keyframe animation tools in Creature. But at the same time, you can very easily also animate with this UI over here. So you can actually drag and see how I'm dragging it changes the splines of your of your animation controller, right? So you can see the whole visualization here. You can tweak it here if you want. You can change the curve, of course, or you can come in here and tweak it as you like. So you have both both pieces of uh, keyframe functionality available to you. Hope you enjoyed that as well. Now, finally, as you can see, animation controllers are a pretty complex subject, very, very powerful. And when you actually add something to the animation controller, if you have something that's driven by an animation controller, for example, let's say the head, if I select it, you will see automatically that in the motor panel, it will say motor driven by anim, anim controller. And if you click edit, it will take you directly to the animation controller window. So you don't have to go and search for it in the drop, uh, drop down menu, you can just easily jump to it. So basically, this means that if you have an animation and you're driven by an animation controller, just, just select it, select that mesh or the bone, and then just click edit and it will take you there immediately and you can immediately see what you're doing. Okay, so I hope this has been a very, very helpful tutorial for you. We've covered the very, very powerful animation controller functionality of Creature. And in this case, we're using it to drive front facing pulse morph targets. This is the tip of the iceberg, as I mentioned before. You can use it to do many, many other things as well. It basically allows you to blend and morph any kind of motor parameter attributes. So this covers physics motors, bend physics, mesh, you know, soft body physics, rotate cycle, custom cycle, uh, walk motors, everything. The whole, the whole list of bone and mesh motors is available for animation controllers. So you're, you're blending across not just simple keyframes, like in this case, we can blend across procedural parameters. We can blend, you know, automated walk cycles. We can blend physics. So that allows you to do muscle activation, which I'm going to cover in the next few tutorials as well. So stay tuned for other tutorials. You, I'm sure you'll find them equally exciting. And the next tutorial is probably going to cover some kind of muscle activation with a new dinosaur raptor animation. And we're going to show you exactly how this is done. And you're going to see even more powerful, amazing animation results you can accomplish with this animation controller functionality. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoy this new feature that will be very, very useful for you for any kind of animation task and happy animating.